Advent is a time of looking forward to God's keeping his promises. He makes some promises to Israel and within large parts of Israel's history is waiting for God to act. And I think that's a large part of what our spiritual journey is like. We, we have a sense that God is beginning to make the world right, but it also seems that God needs to show up in some places. And when you look around, watch TV, there's still a lot of places where there's brokenness and the kingdom hasn't come. Places in our own lives where uh, we feel the need for restoration. And sometimes I think our biggest struggles with God isn't belief, but patience with God. Because the waiting is difficult and it's filled with a lot of sadness and sorrow. And, and, uh, so Advent is this kind of time of, of exile, looking forward to God answering um, our prayers. And, and we do get to the time of celebration. So Christmas comes and there's a time of celebration, very similar to kind of Lent, sets up Easter. So there is a time of celebration, but sometimes I think we rush through it too quickly. And when we do it, I think we become too triumphalistic. We, we mm -hmm. reach too quickly for the easy answers in life and don't learn to sit with the victims of the world and the press of the world. We don't even sit with our own brokenness long enough um, to allow that to be good news. When Jesus enters the scene um, and his ministry begins, you have a group of people the zealots, especially, um, who really felt that it was their job to kind of make the kingdom come and to hurry it up, hurry it along. And I think one of the things that happens is when we don't move at God's pace and when we hurry, um, we feel like we've got to start taking matters in our own hands. I think that way ultimately leads, and I think the Zealots are a good example of this, leads to violence. Because whenever you try to rush anything in a relationship and make it, get it fixed now, make it get to the conclusion now, and you gotta hurry it, we don't do the requisite work. I and mean, I think anytime we've had a conflict with a person and we just wanna get it fixed and we try to rush it, we don't take the time and care to bring everybody along at their own pace. Um, I mean, most of us experience that as pretty much a, a forcing. And whenever we're trying to force things, uh, things get broken. And I think there's, that's the temptation. I think when we get impatient with God, we start putting ourselves in the position of being the Messiah. And we want to, we want to fix things quickly. And I think for good reasons. I think we want, you know, we want to help. But in our urge to help, sometimes we hurry. And I think that's one of the reasons why politics is so volatile right now in America, because politics, whatever it represents, it represents us taking charge of the reins of power and, and making it work out. And, and, and if we don't get it right, then the whole world's going to come on and so it's up to us to save the world, which is why I think every time there's a presidential election or like that, why there's so much anxiety and anger behind it, because I think it's, we feel like everything's on the line. It's, it's, it's up to us to get it fixed. And, um, and if we don't get it fixed, then it's all gonna come to an end. And so, yeah, I do think a lot of our anger and frustration in the world and a lot of the violence we do to each other rhetorically or socially is because we feel like at the end of the day, it's really, up to us and we're alone. And so it's a lack of faith that God won't bring out his purposes in his own time, in his own unique and probably surprising ways. Mm -hmm. um, I'm always struck by how long, you know, Israel waits for God to act in Exodus. I mean, it's, it's, it's hundreds of years that people felt a, just a deafening silence from the heavens before God moves in this emancipatory way um, in the Exodus. And the time between the exile and the coming of Christ was, you know, generations and hundreds of years as well. Um, so, I mean, you end the Old Testament with that kind of, you know, Elijah will come and, and God will come near, and then you open up in the New Testament with the prophecies that John is fulfilling, you know, make way, um, make straight the paths because the Lord is coming, and 
With the interlude, we go so quickly we don't realize how long those people waited. Generations lived and died waiting on God to act. And we always think that we are the generation that God will decisively act, but we might be a waiting generation right. um, for God. Uh,